everyone. I want to welcome you to my channel. My name is Shavana Noble, um, your favorite med student who you will soon know around the world. Today's topic is apply and let God do the rest. Now this topic today, it may cater to, um, honestly, it's catering to the medical student because that's who I am, but it can actually apply to other people that are not medical students. If you're a nursing, if you're getting a job, if whatever you're doing, if you, wh whatever you want to say, applying whatever, that, that's what this is for. Now, um, for me, in my journey towards medicine, there were a lot of things that came up while applying for medical school, which can be daunting and overwhelming. The process is already just too much, okay? But then one thing I knew that was coming up was the application process. And I was so happy that I was finally there. But then when you come there, when you get to that point, it almost feels like you're inadequate. And I noticed that um, some of us get caught up in our deficiencies and then we feel like we didn't do enough. So should we even apply, right? So God made me take a different approach with that because the process will have you comparing yourself to other people. Then you might have everything, well, you, you might not wanna apply because you don't know if you have enough. And then you might actually have um, good grades and you actually have done all the community service and you still don't wanna apply because now you wanna be perfect, okay? There is no such thing as perfection, all right? Um, or well, no such thing as being perfect because we're all striving for progress not perfection, okay? Um, but what I noticed was that it makes you feel like you're not enough. And God made me think of it another way because, I mean, I've seen some people, they can have the perfect scores and still get rejected. <laughs> so it really don't matter if, um, like, with the scores and all, I mean, with how it looks because at the end of the day, God is the one that can get you in the door. It's not necessarily your works. And this is why my message is called Applying Like God Do the Rest. Okay, so before the application process, my journey consisted of basically me doing a few things that weren't truly medical. So I can't even relate to those that had like 800 things going on the application where they were describing all these other things. That wasn't the case for me. And I know some people, they got in by, you know, having this extensive, elaborate application with all these different activities that they've done. Mind you, I'm a non-traditional student. I didn't do that. My my uh, education was more so spaced out and I had took a gap year as well where I was not doing anything that was medical. I was really taking a gap year, meaning I was trying to find out my life. I even applied to nursing. I'm like, why am I doing nursing when that's the same thing as medical school? And then I, I thought about doing an MBA and I'm like, why am I doing an MBA when you don't need a degree to have a business? So here I was back at square one going to medical school. So my journey began in 2009. And I officially got accepted into medical school in 2021. So you can see that's like an 11 year journey. So when I began, I started off at UNLV. I got my um, undergrad degree in athletic training and my minor was in psychology. In that degree, I was able to obtain 1100 clinical hours. So that somewhat helped me to where I didn't have to do so much later on because they um, acknowledged those clinical hours. So I had 1,100 clinical hours. I did shout out the team physician. Now, did it help me? Probably not, because I still was not trying to become a doctor because I knew I didn't want to be in school for 5,000 years. Okay, moving on. So then after that, once I finished my degree, I took two years off. And in that time, I started teaching. Um, and basically, I taught and I tutored in elementary school and with uh, middle school students. Then in 2016, I started back my prereqs. Um, and then in that time, I, I actually started volunteering at a hospital, but it was on and off because I was working at that time too. So I was working and I was trying to do the clinical hours and, well, not the clinical hours, the volunteer hours. And that was only a hundred because <laughs> it was spaced over time and I had organic chemistry and, you know, biochem and all the other stuff at the same time. We wasn't doing too much. So 2019, I applied, once I actually got my degree though at um, CSN, I got my associate's after the bachelor's that I received in 20, um, 2014. So I got my associate, associate's degree um, of biology in 2019. And then that same summer, I had uh, I was accepted into my master's program where I had received a master's of biology at Virginia State University. They did offer me other leadership opportunities that I was able to put on my application to kind of make it pop. But um I, oh, and I also did a so, social media for them for that program as well. And um, I was accepted into a pipeline program 
there uh, through VC VCU, which is Virginia Commonwealth University, and their program is called SAEP. So uh, <laughs> I have to tell the story on that later because, yeah. But I was heavily involved in my church too, which I added to my application. And I do play the alto saxophone, so I added that as well. So honestly, I can say it was really by God's favor, you know, that I stumbled to some of the opportunities that I had before medical school to add a little extra to my application. And because medical school is not a, a one size fits all, so because it's not that, then I was able to, um, I mean, well, I can't say I was able to, but because it's not one size fit all, how do you really know what you need and what you don't need? So that's why this message is called what it is, because you don't know when to stop. You don't know what to add on and you really don't know these things. So basically it's by faith and um, you really don't know what is needed because everyone has different experiences and, and that basically tells you what to do and what not to do. I can't say it doesn't tell you what not to do. Everyone has different experiences and they differ in every way. So I wanted to give you a few tips that uh, that I can say will help you in this journey in applying to medical school. Number one, it's easier said than done, but don't try to stress yourself out. This is basically what God means by cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So when he says that, they're already trying to stress us out. Like it's all, okay, Bray, okay. Um, they're already trying to stress us out in general and god had to help me realize like why are you stressing when i'm the one that is opening the door for you you just need to do your part and that's it stop worrying about what school you're going to get into uh or stop worrying about if you will like it if you won't like it for like i can say this for example when you're trusting god with your life you honestly don't know what is best for you until that opportunity arises god doesn't reveal um, before you get there. He reveals along the way. As you're obedient, then he reveals what you need to be doing. Not, I'm not going to apply until God tell me where I'm going to go. Well, he not because he waited for you to apply so that he can reveal where you should go. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this guy, but when he, when you're trusting God, he's, tr maybe he could be protecting you from something. And just because other people, you know how people might recommend something or tell you not to do something, like, for example, you shouldn't go to that school because I know people that went to that school and they didn't like it. Well, how do you know that the people that didn't go to that school, how do you know that that wasn't for them? They just didn't, it, it just wasn't for them. But how do you know that the opportunity is for you? Maybe God tailored the opportunity for you. So you can't listen to everybody in your journey telling you everything of what you should and shouldn't do. You should always go to God. Um, no one can really tell you. Basically, you need to spend time with God and seek his direction. I'm just saying he did, God didn't give me a school um, in mind. I didn't even know this school even existed. The one that I'm at right now. Had no idea it existed, but here I am right now. And I applied. I thought it was in New York <laughs> and it's not. It's in the Caribbean. So uh, you should always go to God about your choices. Now, number two, leave the details to God because I'm a non-traditional student um, who didn't know about all the things you need in order to apply to medical school. Um, I was like the location. I didn't know that you should research the location, the environment, all these things, which actually adds to the fact of how um, me being in medical school, it became like a more so of a depressive thing. But when I got here, because me being in the Caribbean environment, it's not like the US. So I noticed how depression was coming in because I couldn't relate to things that were here because I didn't have the things that I had back home. So I had to find a new way to relieve stress, a new way to um, have fun. Like, oh, let me go to the beach because that's here. But I didn't want to go to the beach because that's not, that wasn't fun to me. I'm from the desert. So it, it took a whole new, uh, it was a whole new thing for me in order to adjust to where I was living at to cater to me and to to find things that help me be better in this environment. So, um, yeah, I didn't know about all those things in one medical school. And some people, they will tell you that, which is you really do need to know that. When you're choosing medical school, you need to find out the location. Do you even like the location? Does it have everything that you need? Because that can affect your success in medical school. And you can be going through all these depressive moments when you could just be in a place that is not affecting you mentally all the time. Because here, it can affect you mentally all the time because we're ready to get off this island with the quickness all the time. So um, I want to add to that about uh, 
just knowing where to um don't get caught up in the details i applied to a medical school and that was it i applied to all of them because you want to make sure that you apply everywhere you don't know what can open up but don't limit yourself and only apply to one school because what if that doesn't open up and guess what here you are again waiting for the the next cycle um but i knew that i was going to medical school by instinct and that's basically by the holy ghost <laughs> That's how I knew I was going to be going to medical school, but I just didn't know where. And I want to add that sometimes um, you can be expending energy on things that you don't even need to in the process. Some of the recommendations that people may give you saying that you should do this, that, you need to stand out. Um, some of them aren't even needed. You don't even need to do that. You just doing stuff and wasting time doing it. We need to, I mean, yes, we need to take um, people's, whatever they're telling us into consideration. Yes. But do we need to do everything that somebody is recommending us to do? No, we don't need to do that. We need to hear from God and we need to be wise um, in what we choose to do, but we need to hear from God too. Uh, also, I was getting caught in the details and I was forgetting that, what, like I said before, the God I serve, he will open the door for us. Now, number three, have faith um, in God and know that he will make it possible for you. Like faith without works is dead and we need to have faith and confidence. We, have, we need to have faith in God and confidence in ourselves that we have done everything that we need to do. When it's time for you to apply, have the confidence in knowing you did it already. I did everything possible that I can think of up until this point. So just turn it in and know that God is on your side. If he is for you, he's more than the whole world that can be against you. So faith in God is what got me through this process. I made sure I followed through and I believe God for the rest of the details. When I applied, all I had was faith. <laughs> I didn't care what, um, what that MCAT score was, even though I, I, I mean, I probably should have cared, but it wasn't something that God was telling me, like, you need to care about the MCAT score. He was like, you just need to apply because you don't know where you can get in at and you don't need to have the perfect score just to get in. I opened the door. That's it. So, um, I, and you see, I got in, it was not the way I wanted it to be. It wasn't the country that I wanted it to be, but I got in, like it says, write the vision and make it plain so that a herald may run with it. Even though it may linger, it's going to come at an expected time. And it came, all right. It came at this time in my life. Um, and it happened. So number four, use wisdom. When I say I followed through with basically what God told me to do. I mean, I did what was required of me because a lot of us will put the responsibility on God and uh, when he makes a promise to us and that is where we stop. We stop at what he said, but never take time to research where we're going. Um, you know how some of us, we can be like, he told me I was going to be a doctor. He told me I was going to be an entrepreneur. He told me I was going to do this or an entrepreneur. And then you go quit your job and God like, why did you quit your job? Because you need the money um, to fund the entrepreneurial activity, make it make sense. So <laughs> we never research and we never follow through, or we never go back to God after we research on what we should do and what steps we should take. Why this light lightning up in here is just looking like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Sorry, y'all. But the lightning is not hidden. It looked crazy. Okay. I don't know if you can, it should be good now, but okay. Um, yeah. Uh, you know how some of us, we can be like, okay, like I said, whatever the case is for that light situation. Well, do you know what that requires of you? Do you know the, um, what direction that you need to take if you never research and what actually needs to be done? God is wise and he's intentional. He's just not gonna, he's not just gonna have you do something. Um, and I mean, he's going to have to reveal it to you. Yes, he's going to tell you what to do, but then you have to go research. He might speak something or have somebody speak something to you like you're supposed to be this, but it's up to you to go research and follow through and figure out what you should be doing. All right, so some things I did uh, before this process, what I mean by being intentional is I called the school uh, that I wanted to go to because I didn't know where I was going. So that means I called all the U.S. schools. I called those schools of where I was, where I wanted to go and asked them what the requirements were for their school. Um, so you can't be out here like the Lord with me, but don't follow through with what he's telling you to do or what the school is telling you to do because the school is telling you to do something different, right? So um, you still have to fill the requirements um, and follow through with what the school is telling you to do. I went back to school and I'll give you the story. I went back to school 
to do the prereqs and that wasn't enough to have a good application. I, like I said, I called around to different schools um, and they said that of course, all of them said it wasn't sufficient uh, enough of what was what I, I had. So I was told I needed to find a program to boost my science GPA. So I started to look in schools that will allow me to boost my science GPA. And the crazy thing is for them to only require me to have a, a high GPA just to get into the program that's supposed to boost my science GPA. Like, make it make sense. Why is this program like that? Why? why? Does that even make sense? I need a high GPA when my GPA, my science GPA is already low. So I need a high GPA to get into the program. Yeah. All right. So um, I decided to choose an HBCU and I'm so glad I did. So I went to Virginia State University and they gave me the opportunity to complete my biology degree there. And um, like I said, you need to complete your part. I went on and did a master's program. So if I, but I did it in the science. So make sure you know what type of program to do it in, whether science or uh, if they want you to just get some type of creative degree, but nine times out of 10, it's going to be a science degree if you're trying to boost your science GPA. Now, um, like I said, God is a God of wisdom and you need to make sure you do what is needed of you. Now, next thing so I want to add on, do the requirements only and stop trying to add on a thousand things. For example, if your advisor gives you advice or you call the school and they tell you your promise for their school, yes, fulfill those requirements like I mentioned earlier, but nothing more because I know some people that got 800 activities on this application. Uh, they doing 20 things that haven't stepped one foot into medical school, but they just trying to do the most. You don't need to do the most. You don't need 10 degrees. You don't need all this stuff. This is why you need to actually seek God, find out what you need to be doing because I noticed that some of us, some people still being rejected with all those things on the application. Like that's just what it is. They can still get rejected. So that's why why I say that that God is the one that opens the door. You can be you can waste so much energy and time doing stuff that you don't need to do, but it can be easier if you seek God. If you don't ask God like what you should be doing, you wasting time and you wasting energy because he's the one he's the one that knows like stop doing that. Don't go that way. Don't choose that degree. Don't do this. You can save time and energy when you just ask God. When you're looking to him for direction. Um, so I want to say, lastly, is that, uh, well, it might not be last, but at the end of the day, God's one that opens the door. He will open doors no man can shut and shut doors no man can open. Apply with what you have because what you have is enough. We can get so caught up in applying, like I mentioned, that and being perfect that we waste time applying and then we never apply or we miss the season that God has for us. Because if I would have listened to the teachers that told me I need to retake some classes or if I would have listened to the person that told me that I wasn't ready for medical school and I still needed to wait out and and continue on uh, with pursuing that MCAT to get a good grade, I would not be in medical school right now because I would have been wasting time doing something and out of season because God would have spoken, said something. God already told me what not to do. He told me not to listen to them. Even though they had the credentials or whatever the case is, sometimes people's credentials don't mean nothing because what did God say? God is different than what God can see farther than we can see. And we can be listening to a mentor that is giving us advice based on all these other people or whatever the case is. And it's not tailored to you. God gives you instructions that are tailored to your journey and where you need to go. So we can get somewhere faster by always keeping God in the mix. Um, and I want to say that by giving you an example that, um, like I said, God saved you time and energy. I have two stories and we're going to cut it out. But when it was time for me to apply to uh, my master's program, I had a C in organic chemistry, uh, which is organic chemistry two at that. And you really don't need that for medical school. So um, I had already failed OCHEM one. So then I had to wait and retake that bad boy. So <laughs> I had to retake that and I got to be in it. So when I received the C um, and I had told the teacher like what my plans were, that I wanted to go to medical school and all this other stuff, uh, I realized, so now I realized this was my teacher. This wasn't my advisor. The teacher told me that I needed to retake that class because no school is going to accept me. No master's program is going to accept me. So I need to retake organic chemistry too. So I got a scene at the conclusion of class. When I, like I said, when I told him, half the time these advisors, you can't even trust them. This is why you need to see God. They don't know the plans that, that 
God has for your life. Like he says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and give you a future, an expected end. God knows. These advisors don't know. They All they're doing is instilling fear every two seconds and telling you what you can't do and you, what you're not ready for and where you're not going to go. Like, how do you know? You don't even know. You telling me based on what, what has happened to other people and just because it happened to them, it doesn't mean it's going to happen to me. God has different plans for me, okay? It's not, he has different things in store for my life. That's it, that's all. Um, so I want to say that, uh, I want to add to that. I was absolutely not going to wait and take that class again. I was like, oh, they gonna get this C and I'm moving on. What, I, what did I do? I applied to a lot of master's programs in that time. And some HBCUs, yes, I did decline by a few, but I got accepted into Virginia State University because I knew it was by discernment and it was by the Holy Ghost and it was by prayer that God was telling me and directing me, like, don't listen to that. God will let you know what not to listen to. God will let you know what not to feed into. When you're close to him and you're, you have a relation with him as in praying and trying to hear his voice and seeking his face, he gonna let you know, don't listen to that. Don't listen to him. Don't be friends with them. All of that. God will let you know. So if I would have listened to that teacher, I would have been retaking the course and I wouldn't be where I'm now. Number two, the second example, there was this program I was in, which I mentioned earlier, earlier, it was called SAEP, which is a pipeline program that is at Virginia Commonwealth University. And you go through the summer course to gain like, um, to gain experience and to see your readiness for medical school. And this is what they use that program for. So if you do well in the program, you get, uh, you'll be able to get a um, invite into their medical school for the next, for the upcoming year. Uh, for me, that was not the case. Ha, I failed majority of those. Some of the things I failed, but some of them I did do well in. And, um, but that MCAT is the thing that they were like, oh, well, you did do well in some of the things that were in the program. We're not gonna say that you didn't do well, but your MCAT score needs to be a certain way for us to accept you. Wonderful. And the teacher kept telling, well, the advisor there kept telling me, this lightning is getting on my nerves. Okay, the sun's going down, it's going up. This is, whatever. All right, but the teacher told, well, the advisor told me that you're not ready and you need to, um, you're not ready for medical school. So you need to get a degree or whatever in, um, well, not a degree. She told me that I'm not ready and that I need to focus on the MCAT, retake it, and I can get in next year. She told me this over and over again. Oh, you're not ready, you're not ready. Ba -doop -boop. There's always one way, more than one way to skin a cat, okay? What I did was, I didn't even know the Caribbean schools existed until one day, I was in a group that was for medical students, and somebody mentioned, like, uh, you need to, um, there's, Caribbean schools that you get into, but I had no idea there was a stigma attached or whatever. I just knew some people did go to them and they were able to get out of medical schools. So the top ones were like Ross and um, what is it? You got SGU. So I applied to all those, right? I applied to those. And the next year after that, uh, when the, cause the cycle ended, once I ended that program, the pipeline program, the cycle for the MCAT ended. I took it one more time and I still didn't score well. Okay, here I am back in action again because this lightning is just going crazy today. The, the devil don't want me to be great. Okay, I'm just playing. But <laughs> that's what it seemed like because all of a sudden the light is tripping and everything going up and down. I don't know. But okay, like I said, um, the cycle had ended for me getting my uh, retaking the MCAT. So it ended in that September and I didn't have any opportunity to retake it again. So I just used what I have. But and I applied to a Caribbean school and I applied to Ross. I applied to AAUC. I applied to SGU. And there was one school that I applied to, UMHS. I did not finish the application because I was not going there. <laughs> funny, funny when I tell y'all this story. Okay, so I, I said where I wasn't going, right? I said where I wasn't going. But uh, yeah, so I had finished that program. And uh, so I got accepted into Ross University but conditional status. Ross uh, and AUC have the same program. So they both use MERP. So if you don't do well in MERP, you don't get into AUC as well. You don't have the choice of like switching over if you didn't do well in MERP because they both use it. 
So I took the, did a program for MERP. I didn't do well in it at all. So all hope was, I felt like all hope was gone and I was really sad and upset that I didn't get in because I'm like, Lord, I thought you made me a promise that I was going to medical school. And I knew that I was leaving that year. I knew I was like something in me, instinct, the Lord already let me know, discernment or the Holy Ghost prompted me and let me know like, this is not it. You're going to be going out of, you're going to be going to medical school. So, um, I was sad because I was like, okay, I don't have any other options. Those were the other options, Ross and AUC. So then I found out about SGU and I applied to SGU at the last minute. I hurried up and turned in all my stuff for SGU. And the lady was like having me wait, kept saying like, oh, you're going to get in, you're going to get in. And she's like pumping me up, trying to play me, <laughs> pumping me up, trying to play me basically um, saying that I was going to get into the school and I didn't get in. Like she told me the week before school started on that Friday, oh, we're sorry that you didn't get into our school and blah, blah, blah. We have so many other choices. You know, you know what they always tell you. So I was really sad then because I was like, okay, Lord, I know you're not making me stay in Las Vegas. I know you're not making me stay here. I know, I know, no, no, can't be. But I was willing to accept it. I was like, okay, you know what? I have no other choice, no other option. And clearly this is where God wants me to be at. He wants me to stay in Vegas and take another shot at this MCAT again. So I was, I was exhausted, mentally exhausted, uh, just fatigued. I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to even think about the MCAT because I was tired of hearing about it. Okay. I, I put enough energy into doing that MCAT and I was tired of it because you're making us take the test. And this is just me saying, I don't know. Other people might have a different testimony. They, they want to take it all day long. I don't. So we're taking a test that is supposed to show how well I'll do in medical school, but how do you know that I really will do good in medical school by this test? What if I get there and then it's like, oh, hmm, still don't do well. What if I get there? Like, how do I know that this test is really going to show who I am and how I can get through medical school? Because it really doesn't. It doesn't show my ability. I said all that to say that I applied to the school that I'm at now. I finished the application because my friend told me about it and I didn't finish the application because I was like, I'm not going there. <laughs> And uh, I actually applied and that same week I got an invite. I mean, an interview. I got an invite to an interview. I did the interview, applied, got in. The, the catch was the program was not in the country. But they were saying that you can leave the country and go to the school, which I got accepted into the, a program called ARP, which is still conditional status. So I got accepted at UMHS, got into the program, program called ARP, um, but I wasn't staying there. And this was all during COVID. So I got into the program. And once I got out of that, uh, I mean, once I got accepted, I was so excited. Like I got into medical school and the catch was I had to pay uh, like almost $5,000, $6,000 to go out the country to start this program. And when you know that God is for you, that's what's so crazy. When you know God has spoken to you god gives you peace for one that when he tells you something he lets you know like this is for you but when it's time god puts everything in place for it to happen for you when he told you it's going to happen it happens so my testimony is that i that same year <laughs> right after i graduated because i graduated from virginia state university in 2021 and that same year, I got accepted into, I did the Merck program right after I got out of my um, program, my master's program, got out of that, didn't, didn't get accepted into that program, but uh, only, what, two months later, got accepted into ARP, don't mind that rooster, got accepted into ARP, and $5,000 was needed. One of my friends, she had put together a flyer, and I didn't want to put together a flyer, because I don't like asking people for money, I just don't. So she put together a flyer saying how much I needed, like raising money for me to go away from medical school. And when I say I raised all the money I needed to pay for my application, pay for my flight going and returning, pay for my, uh, put my first and my last on my apartment. And I still had money left over when I got there. That was nothing but God. Like that was nothing but God allowing this opportunity to happen because he was like I made you a promise and I was so shocked like Lord you really did it you really made this happen you really did this so I was I was just I couldn't believe it and there I was 
it was only a, I only had a month to get that money. I raised $5,000. Well, it was less than a month. I raised $5,000 in less than a month to get me to medical school. So when I say God has plans for you, <laughs> And he knows more than the people know, more than the people that are recommending you and telling you all this stuff. This is why you need a relationship with the Lord because he will set some stuff up for you. And it happened that same year. And here I am a year later and I'm in medical school. Can I say I'm perfect at it? No, but guess what? I'm progressing at it and, I'm, and it's happening for me. So I say all that to say is um, you have to be careful about who is saying stuff and always verify what is being said with God. Like, once somebody suggests something, it'd be like, Lord, should I do this? Always go to God about what somebody is telling you to do because you can be spending so much energy, wasting time, getting advice from the wrong people because some people can be jealous. Some people can be trying to hoodwink you and tell you to go a direction that you don't even need to take. So I found out as I went along all the things that God wanted me to do, some things I didn't know, some things I wish that I knew about that I could have added to my application, but did I really need to know it? Because what God is doing to me is different what is happening to somebody else. Maybe they needed all that. I don't need it for where I'm going. So, um, yeah, I saw that to say that uh, verify with God. He knows the way that you should go because you miss out on your time and your season. It's always best to seek direction from him. Now, I want to put this in. In no way am I an advisor. I'm just sharing my story with you guys about how I maneuvered through the application process, which helped me uh, which help which might help you in some way and I also want to say that um if God is telling you to do a certain thing don't substitute like what I'm saying don't substitute for uh the greatness that God is putting in you if he's telling you to do something or uh do a certain activity apply to all them different degrees and all that other stuff he's telling you that do what he's telling you to do because I know people can take messages and run with them and that's not the case take only what applies to you but do what's necessary for your journey. And if God is calling you to do all the whatever, do it. Because I don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You know what you're supposed to be doing. God knows. Well, you know what you would like to do. And God just basically, if you delight in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. God will tell you what you should do. Um, or he'll confirm that what you are doing and the way you're going, that's correct. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to get on and say today because that's it. I don't want us to be uh, on this journey longer than what we need to because mine was way too long. Okay, 11 years is too long, too long. So I just wanted to get on and tell you guys, apply and let God do the rest. What you have is enough and God gonna work it out. Like he worked it out for me to get to medical school when I thought I wasn't gonna go. Like I, I had just accepted my fate. Like, okay, I stopped trying. Like, all right, Lord, maybe I didn't hear you correctly, but I did. And here I am now in another country um, obtaining my medical degree. And guess what? You know how some people have that stigma like, oh, well, how do you know? Don't get caught up in the what ifs of what if you don't get out of school? What if this and what if that? Because it doesn't, at the end of the day, God knows. God wouldn't send me this way to fail. He sent me this way for success. He sent me this way because he knows that I'm going to be in I'm going to graduate medical school. I'm going to be in residency. I'm going to ha uh, do fellowship and I'm going to be in the States. He already knows. But even if that, if it's not in the States, or wherever, okay, like I said, even if it's not in the States or if it's international, I don't know, but God knows. And that's it. All I know is I need to just, y'all this hair. Okay. All I know is I just need to focus on where I'm at right now. And that's it. Focus on where I am right now and leave the rest to God. So I thank you guys for tuning in today and I hope that you got something out of this message and that it helps you with where you're going. So don't forget, please subscribe, like, and hit that share button. And thank you for tuning in once again. And I hope success and I, and I hope that you guys have great success on your journey and that this helps you make your choice or make what decision, whatever decision that you have that God wants you to make. All right, see y'all.